revolution. But it, I know it's taking over. Revolution. But it, that's why I'm telling everybody worldwide. This is my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revolution. Welcome everybody, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's January 12th, 2016, and I've got some ranting to do about geoengineering and chemtrails. So, um, I told you guys back on the 15th, right after COP21, that geoengineering will probably be sold um, to the world's leaders as the only solution for um, lax emissions reductions. So, since people aren't going to stop polluting the skies, they're going to have a techno fix of spraying sulfuric acid, aluminum and possibly diamond dust worldwide to coat the sky and block sunlight, which is an enormously bad idea. However, here we go. Business Green Sustainable Thinking Academics Call for Geoengineering Preparation in Wake of Paris Agreements Deadly Flaws. Scientists say failure of agreement to immediately implement emissions cuts means geoengineering must be seriously explored despite the enormous risks it entails. Now, even though they know it's going to kill people, even though it's going to stop rainfall um, in certain places worldwide, even though they know people will die as a result of geoengineering, they believe that it's necessary to keep us from rising to the 2 degrees Celsius heating that will kill us. The, the air war on Earth's climate will increasing amount of cloud seeding and solar radiation management chemicals in the sky help the planet's atmosphere. January 12th, this is on The Nation. So, and then over here on the Forum for Climate Engineering Assessment, that's FCEA, uh, used to be called the DC Geoengineering Consortium. This guy is over here saying the same thing. Hey man, you know, maybe we should do this stuff. Um, that's, that's really unfortunate and, I, and, and I'm gonna just, you know, be real blunt today. I blame you guys. I blame everybody in the chemtrail community um, for it progressing to this point without any progress whatsoever. I happen to be an activist. I don't do this for money. Um, I haven't made a dime <laughs> doing this stuff, and uh, I'm really getting pissed off, so it's time to rant. Um, join us. It's time to ban geoengineering. Wednesday, January 13, 2016, in California, where uh, you know these guys, uh, Patrick Roddy, I was with him at the EPA hearing, Michael J. Murphy, Alan Buckman, some guy from the Air Force, all these people, J. Marvin Herndon, talked to him on the phone, um, didn't seem to want to hear the reality of the situation, but they're all going to have a meeting in California and talk about banning geoengineering. Here's the problem. It's already banned. It's fucking illegal. So um, you're going to sound kind of stupid going to any court of law talking about banning geoengineering coming out of fucking planes because it's already illegal. But if any of you had ever heard of the Etc. group or any of the actual activists that have done some hard fucking work to get this stuff banned to begin with, then you'd already know that because at the Convention for Biological Diversity, climate-related geoengineering and bio biodiversity, you'll see that right here that no climate-related geoengineering activities that may affect biodiversity take place until there's act adequate scientific basis on which to justify these activities and appropriate consideration of associated risks for the environment and biodiversity and associated social, economic, and blah, blah, blah. So basically, it's already banned. Get that. Write it down. Tell everybody so I stop getting people posting this shit on my fucking Facebook wall because it's illegal. So here's the problem with that. While everybody's, you know, talking about, you know, how much, oh, contrails, chemtrails, they're screwing up your sky. Yeah, I agree with you on that. But here's the problem with that. Ship tracks are about 100 times the size of, uh, you know, contrails and chemtrails. Has anybody ever really bitched about that? No, I don't really think so. But back here in 2014, January... On climate, um, climate Viewer News, you can see sulfuric acid from aviation and ship tracks, jet planes, and ships may be higher today than geoengineering SRM would require in 2020. This is where David Keyes talks about spraying the sky with sulfuric acid. And here's a guy named Oscar Escobar, and he's an activist as well, saying that, guess what? Motherfuckers, it's already that high. It would take 25,000 metric tons of sulfuric acid to cut global warming. Uh, but we're already there. So there's that link. Um, you come over here, and this is where I was talking about it uh, back on December 17th. Scientists claim chemtrails are accidental geoengineering. So does that accidentally make it illegal? I don't think so, because they're claiming that, you know, oh, this has already happened. It's, you know, been going on for 60 years. Ooh, we just found out that it's geoengineering. 
Does it really matter at this point? Because guess what? You can't walk into a court of law saying that planes are in some kind of secret freaking agenda to block the damn skies out. You got to go at, at it with some scientific facts. You got to know what the hell you're talking about and not listen to the jerk offs that constantly want to make dollars and, 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 and just bullshit people. I am so pissed off today. I know you guys haven't heard me like this in a while, but I feel like I've wasted a lot of my fucking time because everybody's real fascinated with these planes blocking out the sky. And you know what? None of them have any kind of plan whatsoever. I have a plan. Will anybody listen? I seriously doubt it because it's so much more fun to talk about fucking coal ash and glass particles in your lungs and fucking lithium and all this happy bullshit. It's happy bullshit. The problem with all this is that nobody's really taking any of this stuff seriously. They'd rather concentrate on these planes geoengineering the skies than ever do anything about it to make sure that it's illegal, that it stops, that this won't go forward. But guess what, people? Academics are calling for this stuff regardless of all your bullshit talking. Alan Robach, John Latham, same old names. The guys that John Neeson... Arctic Methane Emergency Group. Do you guys know any of these people? Because if you did, you'd be trying to do something about it. But I don't believe that anybody really wants to do anything about it. In fact, I know that the people that are most in, you know, in on this whole thing, they, they really don't want to talk about it at all. Because guess what? I hear every day, um, oh, let's hear, uh, high bypass jet engines can't make contrails. More efficient, right there, more efficient aircraft create more contrails. Newer engines extract more heat to perform more work, have cooler exhaust, and relatively high percentage of relative humidity. Contrail-induced cloudiness may increase on par with or more rapidly than CO2 emissions. So basically, these planes are making clouds. Here's some science behind it. You guys might want to look at this stuff. And the alternative fuel effects on contrails and cruise emissions are currently flying planes to test biofuels. Have you ever heard about biofuels on any one of your chemtrail websites? I don't think so, because I know. I've been writing about it for three freaking years. Nobody's talking anything serious. And if you believe that the people that you're currently reading have any fucking clue what they're talking about, you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. So... What you can see here, oh, we got to fly behind planes and test the contrails. Guess what? They're doing that shit on a daily basis. This is the access flights over uh, California, and they're basically flying this plane up into the you know, jet, jet exhaust of that plane so they can see, oh, what's in it? Well, how's it work? What's the, what's the percentage of carbon dust, sulfuric acid? D does anybody talk about carbon dust or sulfuric acid on any fucking chemtrail website out there? No. No, they don't. Ongoing DLR research on alternative fuels and aviation emissions. And you can see here, this is what it's all about, people. Dollars per gallon, carbon credits, and carbon taxes. If the aviation industry doesn't get their CO2 and get rid of these fucking clouds, or at least make the clouds cool the planet instead of heating it, then they're going to be broke. Carbon taxes. Carbon credits. Write it down. Learn it. The problem with this is nobody's taking this stuff seriously. They don't want to talk about what's going on in fuel. They don't want to talk about any of that stuff. So that's my issue. That's my issue. That nobody is taking any of this shit seriously. So, we're going to come down here. I'm going to show you some stuff. You might want to know this. These are all the people currently screwing with the fuel. The Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, Project REACT 4C, uh, Center for Aviation Transport and the Environment. Um, have you ever heard of an ice supersaturated region in ISSR? Probably not. Won't get it. I don't really care anymore. Climate compatible air transportation systems, climate optimized routing of flights. That's where you use your computer to go and predict where the freaking clouds are going to be. And if the clouds are going to cool, that's a good thing. If they're not going to cool, they're going to fly the planes around there because guess what? Carbon credits, carbon taxes. You guys have heard this everywhere. You should know this by now. But I'm just going to rant and rave and bitch and moan because I'm sick of all the bullshit out there. Right now, most of the fuel that's being used today is diesel fuel. For the first 40 years of flight, it was all gasoline. And when they changed to diesel fuel in what was called the NATO single fuel concept, they changed from, uh, from JP4, which was gasoline, to diesel fuel. And when they did that, according to my stepfather, who's a uh, retired chief master sergeant in the Air Force at Offutt Air Force Base working on the E3 AWACS, and he confirmed everything that I studied. 
when they changed from gasoline to diesel fuel in all these planes, they had a lot of smoke pollution. All, all this extra unburnt oil coming out the back of the planes making big ass clouds that stick around forever. But the problem with that is that this isn't the first time this has happened. And nobody really talks about any of the, the cancer causing chemicals in there. Yeah, barium's in the fuel. It's called status 450, dinonaphylene sulfonic acid. It's been in there since 1962. It's a anti-static agent that keeps the planes from blowing up right there. Another side effect of the switch to a HITS additive came when they had to change the status 450 to a new status 450 blend because they screwed it all up again. It's called R status 450. But of course, nobody talks about that stuff as well. If you look at the, uh, the, uh, material safety data sheets in it you'll see that it contains two sarah 313 chemicals which are super fun chemicals you put that shit on the ground your um ground is now a toxic waste dump and must be cleaned up yet for for the last 50 years they've been spraying it out of planes just because they don't want the the jet fuel to explode good for you of course nobody talks about this stuff starting to get pretty pissed off about it as you can see here in this chart this is all of the chemicals that they add to the fuel. Not just the fuel that's already dirty and nasty and all that stuff, but these things like the antioxidants, the static dissipator, which is the status 450, anti-icing agency agents, corrosion inhibitors. There's, the, there's all the chemicals. Metal deactivator, thermal stability additives, the spec 88Q462, that's some fancy shit. Did you know that they heat the gas up because it's used like the radiator in your car and they heat it up to a 200 degrees and they made a new chemical that allows them to get it to 300 degrees. But guess what? That shit is poisonous. Biocides. Have you ever heard of a biocide? They put biocides in planes because they're full of freaking bacteria. Spraying bacteria everywhere. So they put these biocides in there to kill the bacteria in there. They're also known as humbugs. Go look it up. So this is the, the real chemtrail contrail versi is that now that they've recognized that plane the clouds are heating up the planet they are doing everything they can to engineer that jet fuel to make these clouds now cool the planet the simple version of it is carbon black dust and sulfuric acid two things you can focus on those two things throw everything else out if you get carbon black dust in clouds some of you guys have probably seen the photos of the black chemtrails black chemtrails are carbon black dust carbon black soot Soot is the number one cloud condensation nuclei coming out of planes. The, the water and the sulfuric acid and lead and metal and everything else stick to this carbon black dust. The carbon black dust melts on the, um, makes black highways on the North Pole. Everywhere. You should go look this stuff up. And um, nobody's going to talk about it. Nobody's going to talk about the real deal of the chemicals that are in there and how they're poisonous. Trimethyl benzene, Sarah 313 chemical, naphthalene, Sarah 313 chemical. That means it's a cancer-causing chemical. The other two main, main ingredients are trade secret in this Spec 88Q462. Same with the Status 450. 10 to 30% trade secret polymer containing sulfur. Surprise, surprise. Nobody, nobody talks about this stuff. And I'm starting to get pissed off because we're at a point now where, uh, let's just throw that out, where, you know, this has been going on for, you know, since the dawn of aviation. Um, first, entry, first entry I have here, 1958. Clouds are blocking out um, over Palm Springs. You know, then, you know, a little bit further, um, if, you know, there were 300, this scientist back in 68 said, if there were 300 planes in the sky, it might easily be 100% covered with cirrus clouds. Did you know that contrails turn into cirrus cloud? They call it contrail cirrus. And that's the problem is that once these clouds turn into cirrus clouds, they no longer are contrails. And nobody talks about these facts and how it, how it's all happened before. And what happened was in 1970, I believe, Jet pollution hit. Illinois and New Jersey officials will not settle pollution suits against the ma nation's major airlines out of court, despite Tuesday's agreement between the airlines and the federal government to lean up the jet aircraft exhaust. Representatives from 31 major do um, domestic airlines agreed to install burner cans to eliminate most of the smoke from their nearly 1,000 aircraft in 1972. Did you know that? The government will tell the nation's 43 commercial airlines Tuesday that they must end pollution of the skies, pollution of the skies, with jet engine smoke. 
Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And that's where we're at today. Even though all the facts are there, they're readily available here on climateviewer.com. Just click on this. Click on artificial clouds. It's right up here, little three bars. Click on it, artificial clouds. You'll see all the articles. And we know that this has happened before. Um, mainly at issue is the installation of a redesigned combustor or burner can. That's the can, the little tubes sticking out the back of each of the engines that they said would reduce a 70% reduction of all smoke pollution. They called it smoke pollution. So in 1970, chemtrails were called smoke pollution. And they installed burner cans to get rid of it. Well, guess what? That was from, let's see, 58 to 1970. Okay? So 23 years. And, you know, now we're here's where we're at. Okay? That's where we're at. Now they've... they've you know, been sued by two states for making clouds and blocking out the sky, and then suddenly it all goes away again. Um, the facts are there. Um, now we're here at the at the very end of this very long, um, you know, timeline here, and you can see that their new idea is to stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft. Commercial aircraft could be used to deliver sulfate into the stratosphere by increasing fuel sulfur content at flight altitude intercontinental flights okay so here's the facts there's the biofuels jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control okay these contrail series which affect which artificially increase earth's cloudiness and become almost indistinguishable from natural cirrus are amongst the most uncertain contributors to earth's radiative forcing so that this is this is completely uncertain according to the scientists However, these access flight guys are using chicken fat fuel to make uh, emissions look cleaner and greener. Sustainable alternative jet fuels. Insight researchers explore how aircraft contrails can impact, impact climate. The Commercial Aviation Alternative Fuels Initiative, CAFI. The Continuous Lower Emissions Energy and Noise Clean Program. The Alternative Aviation Fuels Broad Agency Announcement. Partnership for Air Transport Noise and Emissions Reductions, Partner, and the, the Air, Airport Cooperative Research Program. All these guys are trying to figure out how to make these jet um, clouds, these chemtrails, not heat the planet and cool it because it's about carbon credits and carbon taxes. If they don't, if they keep heating the planet up, they're going to have to pay carbon taxes. If they can turn these clouds into something that's, you know, turn lemons into lemonade, they're going to cool the planet. That is carbon credits. So, what are they doing? Access to flights are testing JP-8 doped with sulfur. Dr. Rangsai Halthori, I've interviewed him twice on the radio. I'm going to go back and call him again because I've got a lot of bitching to do. But um, here's the facts, guys. This is at, let's go to the link because I want you guys to see it, American Meteorological Society in situ, which means on-site measurements of contrail properties measured during the 2013-2014 access project. And what you'll see is that they are testing JP-8 fuel doped with sulfur. That is what the guys are talking about. Putting more sulfur in the planes to, um, you know, to cool the planet. That's their whole gig now. So, how do we know this is going on? Well, they also have this cirrus cloud seeding thing with bismuth triiodide where they're going to seed it from via commercial airliners to melt these clouds away. Because that will give them some carbon credits instead of carbon taxes. But here's the facts. This is the, the most recent paper. I got this from Ken Caldera's forum. Andrew Lockie posted it. Impacts of aviation fuel sulfur content on climate and human health. And what you're going to see, applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitudes combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel, which is biofuel, fuel at lower altitudes results in reduced aviation induced mortality meaning less people will die around airports because they're using low sulfur on the ground and increased negative radiative um, energy compared to the baseline aviation. So at, at altitude, if they put more sulfur in there, it's going to cool the planet. If they put less in, in a takeoff, it's going to keep people from dying. So what does that tell you? There's two different tanks in the plane where they got one with a lot of sulfur and one with a little sulfur. So David Key talked about spraying sulfur into the sky to cool the planet, and that's exactly what planes do. Have you ever heard of acid rain? Because when I was in, in school, I heard about it every single day. Acid rain, acid rain, acid rain. Nobody talks about it anymore. Now the new term is ocean acidification, which they blame on CO2, not planes spraying fucking sulfuric acid on a daily basis. 
So because everybody's so focused on the happy bullshitters of the chemtrail community who have no um, real plan, they want to have meetings where they, you know, have everybody sit around and talk and say, oh, I know so fucking much about chemtrails when not a damn one of them knows a thing. And I've talked to every single one of them. And I, and I apologize to my friends out there that I've talked to at length. Most of you own chemtrail websites. I don't, I don't know why you don't want to get it. Because when you don't get it, these people are not going to get it. And when these people don't get it, this is what we fucking get. Geoengineering. Now, I'll be good goddamned if I'm going to have to deal with these motherfuckers legally spraying sulfuric acid all over the skies to cool the planet because you guys failed. Because you guys are so focused on, you know, patting each other on the back and telling each other that you did such a fucking good job when none of you know what you're talking about. And it's so fucking unfortunate. And that's why I'm so pissed off because I have failed. I have failed to explain in graphic detail to you how important this is, why we can, we need to do something about it, and how to do something about it. I went to the EPA. Um, I made an EPA hearing happen um, it was because of me. It's the first time in history anything like it's ever happened. And I really hope that this isn't the end. I hope that this isn't what we're going to end up with. Because everybody's so focused on, you know, bullshitting each other about how it's an intentional program. And we know. And, and it's fucking lithium and glass and all this bullshit. When we know for a fact it's about carbon credits, carbon taxes, carbon black dust, and sulfuric acid. And it all comes from the jet fuel, not from some fancy-ass pipe, not from some fucking pump. I've seen every single picture of a pump ever put on any fucking chemtrail website, and all of it was fake. So when is this community going to grow up? When is something going to be done about it? Is anybody ever planning on doing anything about it? That's what I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about, because right now, I don't do this for you know, personal gratification. I don't do this for attention. I don't do this for fucking money. There ain't no ads on my website. I do this because I don't want to grow up in a world. I don't want my daughter to grow up in a world where men control the global thermostat by spraying chemicals all over the effing planet because people here were so busy jerking each other off to chemtrail website bullshit that nothing was ever done. So that's my concern. I really hope that people will grow up get educated and get motivated to do something about it because I don't like wasting my time and I don't want my daughter to grow up into this fucked up world. Rant over.